So in today's video, we're going to talk about the alleged storyline of the third MCU Spider-Man film. I know that some people have wanted to hear my predictions for the third MCU Spider-Man film, but personally, I've been trying to avoid that myself. Because if I keep coming up with my own expectations for these movies, my own ideas, it kind of it, it loses the mystique and surprise of the actual film itself which is exactly why I've read a plot leak. And I know I'm late to the party on this one, but you know what Mr. Aziz says? Late, 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 you are always late. And that's good enough for me. Once again, this video is sponsored by NordVPN and you can get four months free with a three year subscription by using my discount code. Everything you need is in the description below, so check it out. All right, onwards. <laughs> So, Spider-Man home something, Spider-Man Homer, Spider-Man Homer. So after Mysterio revealed Spider-Man's secret identity at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home, all eyes are on Peter Parker, including the eyes of the police. After a lengthy battle, Spider-Man is finally arrested and put into jail. And he's a pretty long way away from home, I wouldn't say far from home, but he's a fairly a, a fair ways away from home. He's somewhere else in the USA. That's the title of the movie. Spider-Man, he's, he's not exactly far from home, but he's quite a bit away from home, but he's still in the USA. So then we've got kind of a prison movie thing going on with Spider-Man. And Peter is greeted in jail by none other than Adrian Toomes. And of course, as we know, Adrian Toomes did vow to keep his secret at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming and has a sense of sort of mutual respect for him. As well as that, Adrian Toomes has connections with the Scorpion in there as well. So they kind of work together to help Peter get out of jail. This sounds awesome already, like this sounds really good, it sounds like it's bringing everything kind of full circle, and I like the idea of Spider-Man kind of working with former foes to kind of, you know, get out of jail. I would love to see the dialogue between Peter and Vulture in jail. So meanwhile, Norman Osborn is running for mayor. Now, this is the thing that leads me to believe that this plot leak probably isn't real, is the inclusion of Norman Osborn. And that's not because this character is particularly far-fetched, and it's not not because we've seen him a dozen times before. I mean, the fact is, we've had two movies without him now. It's a good excuse to introduce him would be the third movie. It's a good time to do it. But every single Spider-Man film plot leak all revolves around Norman Osborn. When Spider-Man Homecoming was coming out, I was like, oh, is Norman Osborn going to be in this movie? Norman Osborn's going to be in it. Uh, the the aftercredits is going to have Norman Osborn. Just wait for it. It didn't. Oh, but in Far From Home plot leak, uh, Mysterious' whole goal is to take over the whole Stark Tower. He's going to take it back for himself. It's going to become the base of the Sinister Six, led by Norman Osborn. Yeah, sounds awesome, but it didn't happen. I honestly think that anything pertaining to Norman Osborn or the Sinister Six is something that's just going to stick with so and maybe we'll see that at a later date. I believe that this is probably going to be Marvel taking their opportunity to make a nice conclusion for Spider-Man before he goes back to Sony. There's probably a reason why this Spider-Man Marvel Sony deal is so much shorter than the previous one. With that said, allegedly the reason for this deal being made in the first place was Tom Holland drunkenly phoning Bob Iger telling him we got to think of the fans and being terrified for his own career and that's what caused the overall change. So if Tom Holland is kind of refusing to accept the possibility of Marvel and Sony splitting. And Marvel and Sony are both at a stage where they're both kind of happy with things. I, I think there's every reason for them to renew this in the future. But I digress. Norman Osborn is running for mayor. Meanwhile, Peter breaks out of jail with the help of Vulture and Scorpion. And Peter claims back his web shooters on the way out. Peter contacts Happy, who suggests that he lays low, and Happy talks to Norman Osborn about clearing Peter's name, which Norman Osborn agrees to and sets out to do. Peter creates his own brand new Spider-Man suit made of cheap materials, so hopefully something that still looks like a Spider-Man suit without being too techy, and tries to work his way home. Now if I remember right, the jail that Vulture was sent to in Spider-Man Homecoming was Oregon. So Peter's allegedly got to work his way all the way from Oregon to New York City. But we follow a contracted killer trying to take down Spider-Man, and basically following him all the way across the country. So kind of a no country for old men kind of a vibe, and that's Craven the Hunter. And I can imagine him being the sort of the Javier Bardem character from No Country for Old Men. That'd be sweet. So of course Spider-Man battles Craven as he tries to get home, and Craven is taking 
taken down. But who contracted him? Well, it turns out that Mysterio survived, and that his plan was not only to ruin Spider-Man's reputation, but to also kill him. So it really is a game of survival. Norman Osborn successfully clears Spider-Man's name, Kraven is defeated, and Mysterio makes one last ditch effort to kill Spider-Man himself, resulting in his humiliating defeat and him being sent to jail in Peter's place, probably to get his just desserts from Vulture and Scorpion. Heh, <laughs> don't drop the soap, Beck. So it seems like all's kinda well that ends well, except there's one last thing. Peter's identity is still known to the entire world. Well, Doctor Strange proposes to Peter that he can fix that by making everybody forget. The film would roll credits before Peter answers that question, continuing the cliffhanger of the world knowing Peter Parker's identity. So will he be like the next Iron Man, whose identity is known to the world, or will he continue to be the Spider-Man we know and love? At the very least, he's no longer been framed for murder this time. Sadly, in this plot leak, there is no mention whatsoever of J. Jonah Jameson, but I feel like he could potentially play quite a role in this story, continuing to run a smear campaign against Spider-Man, sort of fighting against Norman Osborn in that regard, and I think it would be an interesting way of introducing Norman Osborn would be to have him on Spider-Man's side. I honestly don't think this plot leak it holds any water, I don't think it is real, however, I think whoever wrote this should definitely write the next film because that sounds awesome. I feel like it brings this entire franchise together in such a nice way. You could re-include Vulture again, you could re-include the Scorpion, you could bring back Mysterio once again, yet you'd still get a new villain in Kraven. The thing is, tonally it sounds very, very different from the first two films, and I would certainly love something of a much darker tone like this. However, I can't imagine this being the case, because they're kind of aware of their kind of teen comedy sort of genre they're trying to go with this, and I know they've really been banking on this ensemble cast with Peter and Ned and Betty and MJ, like how would you fit those characters in? There'd be a lot to fit into this movie. I think for those hoping for the Sinister Six as well, I think it would be a step in the other direction going away from the Sinister Six a little bit, because everyone's kind of getting defeated, everyone's kind of getting their just desserts, they're all going in opposite directions, but you've got people in there that could be in the Sinister Six. Uh, if Adrian Toomes would be getting a full-on redemption though by helping Spider-Man, I think that would rule out him being a part of that Sinister Six in the future. I'm gonna be completely real, I would rather have something like this than the Sinister Six, though. I would rather they do something like this, where they incorporate the villains in a very interesting, intriguing way, than just shoehorn the Sinister Six in there. I think if you're gonna do the Sinister Six, the best way to do it is kind of like in Spider-Man PS4, where they are a previously established thing. Where it's not a bunch of villains all coming together and forming, they are, they've already been around, they've already been around the block a few times. And I think this team-up definitely suits an older, more aged Spider-Man. One with more experience than the Tom Holland Peter Parker so far. I say this for the third Spider-Man film. On one hand, like, the identity reveal is gonna mean that Peter is gonna have a very, very, very big battle on his hands. No matter who he's fighting, he's going to have to fight harder than ever before to protect his family and friends, and to protect himself. There's not gonna be a break from having the mask on now. He's gonna have to really fight. I'm hoping that doesn't mean he's gonna ditch the costume for most of this movie, though, because the Spider-Man costume is just is, is awesome to see. I always love seeing the Spider-Man costume. I mean, I, I like what they did with the whole Night Monkey thing in Spider-Man Far From Home where he had a different persona. Like, I think stuff like that is creative and fun, and I think they could do something like that with like the homemade suit that he would make while he's on the run. I mean, to be fair, it wouldn't kill to have a more Peter-centric story. I mean, we had a whole film that was all about the suit with Spider-Man Homecoming, so it wouldn't hurt to do something that's a little more Peter-centric. Would Mysterio wear the fishbowl again in a story like this? Like, I would love it if he did, but I can't necessarily see any reason for him to don that costume again after Spider-Man Far From Home. Although if he is going to battle Peter, that, that could be that could be a good means to bring back that costume, or it could be like the second coming of Mysterio. Obviously there's a lot of blanks in this alleged leak that you can kind of fill in there, and I think if they had like a storyline pertaining to the second coming of Mysterio in the third act, that could be really cool. It would kind of show that he was victorious because he always wanted to be kind of like a messianic figure, so you could kind of have the, kind of that victory in the third act of this one, where the world is cheering and applauding because Mysterio is back, and you could imagine the reactions of like Ned and Betty and MJ when they see Mysterio on the news and they're like, oh god, this again. There it is, there's your opportunity for a J. Jonah Jameson cameo. I mean, I I'll say this, like Mysterio in this plot leak is another kind of red flag for me, because while I would love for Mysterio to return, and while, while I think it's very much in his nature to fake his own death, that's very much what the character's all kind of about, 
At the same time, it's not unusual for a Spider-Man film villain to be a one-and-done villain. There are a lot of clues, though, that hint to the possibility that Mysterio survived, even just in the after credits scene. At the time of Peter halting the drone strike in London, Mysterio was basically a dead mess. But in the after credits, he's certainly energetic enough to be talking about Peter's true identity, not to mention wearing a completely different costume. I mean, he did admittedly say, please render my illusion suit at one stage. So th there were clues that this was going to happen. So Mysterio's return, 50-50. I think it's kind of unlikely, but at the same time, it should happen. Making him kind of the main villain, the guy holding all the strings in this one, though, that's going to be an interesting thing. It would effectively render Mysterio as kind of the nemesis of this version of Spider-Man, which I could certainly roll with. Mysterio is my favorite, so like, why the hell not? And the whole no country for old men thing just bodes well for me. I mean, John Watts has always been kind of the Coen Brothers inspired director. If you've ever seen Cop Car, he's very much got kind of a Coen Brothers kind of a vibe to it. We could also link back to homecoming a little more because Peter would have to travel through some rural territory to get back to New York City. If you remember in Spider-Man Homecoming, we established that Peter can't really web swing in certain environments. Since then, he's kind of chosen to stick to the places with the tall buildings. So how does Spider-Man function when he's in rural America and he's just trying to get home? And this could be a seriously awesome excuse for a really raw battle with Craven. We've seen Spider-Man fighting Doc Ock on the side of a building. We've seen him fight him on a train. We've seen him leaping from balloons in Times Square to battle the Green Goblin. We've seen him fight the Vulture on a plane. We've seen him battle Mysterio at the Berlin train station and at the London Bridge. Spider-Man is known for high-flying motion, very kinetic set pieces. So how about just Spider-Man fighting Kraven, a normal guy, in a field? Imagine how kind of interesting that could be. It's a battle that's so unevenly matched that you could come up with something so creative for it. Something less kinetic and acrobatic, but more emotionally filled. I gotta say, I'm absolutely sold on this version of the plot. I can't really think of anything better than that. I know a lot of people want to see Matt Murdock come into things and kind of have like a courtroom thing with Peter Parker where he kind of tries to clear his name. While Mysterio has told the world that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, he hasn't actually really given any kind of confirmation of that. So there's still a chance that his name could be cleared in a non-supernatural way. But I think that all sounds awfully low stakes. I want to see concrete evidence happen in this universe and then think, oh god, well how the hell is he going to get out of this then? And I don't just want the third Spider-Man film to be a courtroom drama. I'd love a Spider-Man and Daredevil crossover, but I just don't think this is it. Well, what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are the links to my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? because you could get a way better costume from Zentai Zone. Check out their range of custom-made, tailored superhero costumes. Ridiculously good quality, value, and customization. Link is in the description below, as well as my coupon code channel PUP, where you can get a discount off of your purchase. And while you're at it, why not get your suit designed by my talented buddy Dan from New Blood Dan's Workshop? You can contact him via the link in the description below. Seriously, guys, you do not want to miss out on your chance to be your favorite superhero and feel authentic and professional. And you don't want to miss out on that Channel Pup discount.